My name is Ali Yurigolu, and I'm an assistant professor in the economics group at Stanford Graduate School of Business. In the United States in the last couple of years, there's been a, a rapid increase in the number of a certain class of pharmaceuticals that are considered under shortage. The exact area of pharmaceuticals where this has been happening is sterile injectable pharmaceuticals. These are in drugs that are injected into your body through your bloodstream. So mostly done at the hospital or the doctor's office, like chemotherapies, anesthesia. These are medicines that are not that expensive. These are generic medicines, so they should be getting produced. People have traditionally had access to them. And there's been an increase in the number of plant shutdowns and the number of drugs that have been taken off the market um, in the last couple of years, and it's become a bit of a, a public health crisis. There's a debate about why the increase in shortages all of a sudden. Is it just bad luck, increased number of people getting sick, or is there something maybe regulatory going on? My research focuses on a regulatory change that occurred in 2005. For a large proportion of the country, mostly old people and, and disabled, um, the insurance company is the government, it's Medicare. Before 2005, they go, they get their drug, their health provider, doctor, bills Medicare, and Medicare determines at what rate they pay for these services. Before 2005, Medicare paid at what was called the average wholesale price. So they looked at how much did it cost your hospital to buy this drug? That was the goal. Okay? But there was a loophole in this definition. There was nothing that Medicare could actually verify how much the hospital was paying for the drug. So you ended up with this price, which was a bit of an artificial price. So Medicare saw this. You know, they realized we need to decrease healthcare expenditures. Why not tie the reimbursement rate to exactly what the hospitals are paying? Make that price that they report correspond to something in reality. And the question is, did this decrease in payments cause the increase in shortages after this lag? And that's where my research comes in. The basic idea is you look at drugs which serve a lot of Medicare patients. It's just based on the, the, the class of diseases drugs serve, they're gonna serve older or younger patients. The change in Medicare payments is behind the increase in shortages. Drugs which are more reliant on Medicare for their revenue should have had a greater increase in shortages than drugs that are less reliant on Medicare. And I found that indeed, yes, Drugs which are more reliant on Medicare have had a greater increase in shortages after the policy change. The way healthcare expenditures have been growing, it's going to bankrupt the country. Uh, now the question is how to do it, you need to do it in a smart way. So this is one example where a well-intentioned effort to decrease expenditures may have led to unintended consequences. I view this shortage issue as sort of a microcosm for the larger sort of million dollar question, which is, how should we reduce healthcare expenditures without hurting innovation? In this case, we reduce expenditures and we hurt something closely related to innovation, which is investment in production. The incentives to produce and maintain capacity for a certain drug, which is very similar to the decision to develop a new drug. There's both overuse and underuse in our healthcare system. So if you have underuse of preventative medicine, ends up driving up costs or overuse of medicine that doesn't really cure or, or treat diseases that drives up costs. The question is how to tailor those cuts to decrease overuse and increase underuse. Um, and it's not an easy problem. You know, here's one example where they've arguably got it wrong and it had dire consequences. 